is a situation in which the theory seems to be right because the graph is a straight line. Okay, the straight line bit shows that this, um, shows that the heat capacity of the electron is indeed proportional to T. But the fact that the intercept does not agree shows that some parts of the theory is not right. Okay, the part where we have to do this calculation, the part that is related to the Fermi energy and in turn to the number density and the electron mass. <coughs> so in order to explain this, the physicists have carried out more experiments and the explanation that is normally used today is that the mass here supposed to be the mass of the electron is modified. <coughs> if you remember, when I went through the theory, I started from a particle in a box. And then I got the energy levels. And then suddenly I throw in all these other electrons without <coughs> further, well, without qualifying, without giving any reason why it's alright to do that. And in fact, it is not alright because when you when you then put in all the many electrons into the box, they start repelling each other, and that obviously would cause the energy to change. The energies, en energy levels are not going to remain the same, and things get very complicated. And to make things worse, not only do you have electrons, you have a lot of atoms. It's, it's very crowded in a metal, and they are going to get into the way of each other. You have lots of interaction between electrons and between electrons and atoms. So in fact, it's obviously a lot more complicated, and it is. If we look at it, if we look at it in this way, it is actually surprising that the theory or the experiments even give us a straight line that agrees with the theory. But throughout the years, it has been understood that these interactions, okay, after um, even though they are complicated. They work out in such a way that the electrons in the metal could actually be described, well, usually be described as um, behaving in more or less the same way in spite of these electrons, uh, these interactions, but with a different mass. Simplistically, we might th think that um, because the electrons have, have to move about, around among all these other electrons and atoms, because, because it experiences this resistance. It behaves as if it's heavier. It's like it's in a vacuum, but it's heavier, so it moves with more inertia. So usually that is about right. Okay, and what would happen is that in the experiment you find a different gamma, and the way it is normally explained is that the M has changed. Right? So if you do this calculation with the actual mass of electron, you find a value that is different from the gamma. And to make it right, you change the M so that it agrees with the gamma. And then you call that M the effective mass. Okay? So now you have this idea that with a perhaps heavier electron, it will agree with the, the, um, with, with the measured value. Of course, this this is not just a single piece of explanation. Right? Through the years, the physicists have built up a lot of theories about band structures and electron interactions and quantum theory, field theory and all that, which um, most of which I'm not very clear about. But the idea is that it is the usual explanation now to call this the effective mass, and we can actually obtain it if we have the experimental results, we can actually get this quite easily. Okay, so let's have a look at how to do that. If you look at this relation between gamma through the formula for C, Fermi energy and the mass, what you'll find is that gamma is proportional to 1 over T. Sorry, 1 over Tf, the Fermi temperature. 
which is proportional to EF, which is inversely proportional to the M. So therefore, gamma is directly proportional to the mass. So this, has, this gives us a very easy way. Um, we can, from theory, we can calculate the expected <coughs> gamma. So what you have in the table on the slide, okay, in that table, on the first column on the left is just the elements of a few typical metals that have been measured. On the second column, free electron gamma just means the value that you would get if you calculate gamma from this expression, the theoretical gamma, using just the mass of the actual electron itself. The third column, measured gamma, is what you get if you actually plot the, measure the heat capacity, plot the graph, show you previously, and find the vertical intercept. So the measured gamma is the vertical intercept on the graph. Now the ratio there, the ratio there, or on the last column, on the right, is simply obtained by taking the ratio of the gamma. Because gamma is proportional to M, the ratio of the gamma is just the ratio of the mass. So in the, the fourth column, it should be obtained by taking the measured gamma and dividing by the free electron <coughs> gamma. All right. If they agree, then it's just one. If they don't, you get a different number for example, 2.3 for lithium. And you explain this by saying that the electron <coughs> mass in a, helium, uh, a lithium metal is effectively 2.5 times larger than the mass of a free electron. So we explain this by this idea of the effective mass. All right, so that's the same thing. Okay, so that was the part about the effective mass. So one more thing um, before we uh, wrap up this topic on electrons in metal. I've, in the last lecture, also explained that um, how we can estimate for a typical metal like sodium. We can put in some numbers into it, well, in, into the equation and show, show that for a typical metal, kT, if you remember, kT is the amount by which the electrons near the Fermi level will be excited. Okay? You'll find that this kT is very small at room temperature compared to the Fermi energy. So that even at room temperature, the Fermi direct distribution, which is a very sharp step at zero Kelvin, <coughs> this distribution will only be slightly smoothened at room temperature. And from there, we derive all those formulas for the heat capacity. But what happens when the temperature is really high? If the temperature is, say, a, a few thousand degrees Celsius or Kelvin, the electrons would get excited to much higher level. And it would possibly look Something like that. It's not just slightly smoother, but it, be, it could become completely smeared out. When that happens, it would <coughs> behave like an ideal gas. You would have the situation in which the electrons are... Yeah. At that temperature then, <coughs> would KT be larger than you? Sorry? At temperatures of about 2000 uh, Celsius. Right. Would KT be about the same size as uh, EF, or would it be larger? Um, that depends on the EF. I can't remember. Uh, well, okay, I, I did not actually...